Now, somewhat interested, drive. Cabrera began to visit the farmer and soon became the main recipient of the carved stones, of which it appeared the farmer had a virtually endless supply. The doctor then began to create the kind of stone library which he organized by subject matter. The subjects including the races of man, ancient animals, lost continents and global catastrophes. He questioned the farmer many times about the source of these stones but the farmer, still in fear of being arrested again and jailed for life, remained evasive and persisted with his story that he had carved the stones himself. It must also be understood here that removing or selling ancient artifacts carries a heavy penalty under international law, a fact which could help to explain the farmer's sudden change of attitude when he was arrested. The farmer produced more of the stones for sale every week and after purchasing a few thousand of them drive. Cabrera became to feel as though he had indeed fallen prey to the farmer and that the man had actually created the thousands of carved stones himself. So he then began pressing the man on the method he had used to carve them but again the man continued to remain evasive and kept refusing to discuss even the method he had used to carve them with the doctor. Eventually drive. Cabrera reasoned that logically. Because of the enormous volume of stones in the collection, if the farmer had indeed carved all the stones himself he would have to have carved the first stone when he was two years old and then carved one stone every day for over forty years, in order to produce the total library. It didn't take much to reason that quite obviously such a thing was not possible so drive. Cabrera then set out to find out the answers about the ICA stones based on a study of the many designs depicted on them. The carved stones come in a huge variety of sizes. There are some that will fit in the palm of your hand, others about as large as a medium-sized dog and all sizes in between. Every stone depicts an image etched into the surface of the rock in continuous lines, not scratched on by repeated lines. Geologically, they are a form of andesite, a very hard volcanic rock that varies in color from gray to black and is quite difficult to etch using hand tools. Bandazide comes in various forms. Coal is also a type of bandazide. Notably the etched sections on the rocks reveal a different color than the original pattern that appears on the outer surface of the stone and yet the etched groups also reveal signs of this pattern indicating that the etching was done a very long time ago. However pattern can also be faked and so one of the stones was also sent for testing to laboratories in Germany who have since authenticated both the pattern and the incisions of the etchings as being extremely ancient. To briefly explain the dating of carved stone. Radiocarbon dating, commonly used on such things as pottery or clay figurines, cannot be used on rock because rocks contain no organic material. However the surface of rock has a varnish coating covering it which is a result of bacteria and other minute organisms that adhere to it over time. Old rock will have a coating of this thick black varnish which is known as patina on its surface. A good strong patina takes thousands of years to darken, discolor and eventually form a solid coating on each stone. Etching the surface of these stones naturally removes this layer of varnish. On the ICA stones however, this layer of patina can also be found within the etched groups which indicates that the etching was done an extremely long time ago. At least long enough for the varnish to build up again. Many of the scenes depicted on the ICA stones are quite astounding fig. Six and seem well beyond the knowledge of an uneducated farmer from a small Peruvian village. There are stones showing genetic codes, and the prolongation of life, some that show blood vessels being reconnected via reabsorption tubes. One stone depicts the cesarean section while using acupuncture as a form of anesthetic. There are many stones that clearly depict people riding on dinosaurs fig. 7 and on flying reptiles fig. 5. There are stones depicting natives wearing tall crowns and long robes similar to the Incas in appearance while performing medical procedures on patients fig. 8. Some even depicting heart and brain transplants. Others show men using telescopes to view an approaching comet fig. 9. There is a series of four stones that show the four hemispheres of the Earth and studies have now shown that all of them are reasonably accurate except that one shows an extra continent that is no longer their fig. Zero. It's interesting that lost continents are such a constant theme of so many ancient myths isn't it? 
Another very interesting stone shows a rather accurate depiction of some of the lines found on the Nazca Plains fig. One even though the lines can only really be viewed from the air. It is difficult to believe such an accurate carving could have been done by a village farmer. Drive Cabrera soon reasonably concluded that it simply was not possible that the farmer had carved all the artifacts on his own, he simply did not have the time, the skills needed, or the scientific and botanical knowledge required to create the stones. After some time and after purchasing about 11,000 of the stones, the doctor became a trusted friend of the farmer. He eventually learned that the man was only released from prison once he had agreed to present the signed confession stating that he was cheating the tourists. He had agreed to say that the stones did not come from the hills but that he had actually carved them himself. It was either that or go to prison for the remainder of his life for selling stolen antiquities. Drive Cabrera continued his research in an effort to interpret the maps depicted on several stones even working with numerous geologists to obtain their expertise. Several of the stones had maps on them showing what looked like the world, only in a somewhat weird configuration. Some of the angles and land masses looked vaguely familiar but the majority of the continents were badly warped into strange shapes making identification difficult. However after further study geologists have now confirmed that based on current computer projections, the shapes indicated on the rocks are indeed accurate for the planet Earth, as it was, about 13 million years ago, that is, pre-Stone Age. Some of the carved stones even accurately show ancient star charts. And again, that poises enormous question. For how could anyone without very recent scientific knowledge accurately know how the skies looked from the Earth and how the Earth looked from the skies at around 13 million years ago? Let alone an uneducated farmer in Peru, in 1960. Some local farmers, lured by the fame of the stones, have now taken to creating and selling forgeries to unsuspecting tourists and so stones that have recently appeared from the area are highly questionable. However, there is no denying the authenticity of the original stones. Who actually created them will probably always remain an unsolved mystery but the graphic detail and unquestionable accuracy of the 15,000 artifacts truly poses one of the greatest enigmas and most alluring mysteries of South America. ancient nanotechnology. Here are some very inexplicable little items. These most intriguing artifacts were made between 1991 and 1993 by a group of men prospecting for gold on the Navrata River, which is located on the eastern side of the Ural Mountains in Russia. In a far cry from gold, what the prospectors found were some highly unusual and mostly spiral-shaped objects fig. 2 the smallest of them measuring a minuscule one flash 10 th of an inch. At first glance the objects appeared to be similar to tiny shells or crustaceans only analysis proved them to be something quite different. Laboratory tests subsequently revealed that these most unusual objects are actually composed of an alloy of copper and the rare metals tungsten and molybdenum, though what on earth they are, what they may have been used for or who made them is an utter mystery. Further tests have calculated these objects to be between 20,000 and 318,000 years old. The 500,000-year-old spark plug in another equally bizarre find in 1961, the owners of a gift shop in Olinshire, California retrieved what appeared to be a normal fossil encrusted geode while fossicking in the Coso Mountains. Much to their surprise however, then they later cut the geode in half with a diamond saw, instead of a collection of crystals as one would expect, they found an obviously artificial object inside it. The encased object had a metal core surrounded by layers of a ceramic-like material and hexagonal now petrified wooden sleeve fig. 3. To the surprise of all, when x-rayed, the object appeared to very closely resemble modern-day spark plug or some other electronic component fig. 4 showing far too many striking similarities to be just casually dismissed figure 25. 
The obvious problem here is that it was found encased inside a fossil encrusted geode that was an estimated to be around 500,000 years old. The last known person to be in possession of the intriguing COSO artifact was one of the original people who discovered it the Mr. Wallace Lane. Lane kept the object at home with him but flatly refused to display it to anyone during his later years. It is thought that Wallace Lane has since died and the current location of the artifact unfortunately remains unknown. Stone Age Modern Hand Tools Do you realize how long it takes for an object to fossilize? We are told that the process literally takes millions of years. Consider then that a group of workers quarrying limestone in 1786 came across an amazing artifact in an underground sand bed about 50 feet below ground level. In the layer of sand they found the stumps of stone pillars and fragments of half-worked rock and after digging a little further, they discovered coins, petrified wooden hammers handles and pieces of other petrified wooden hand tools. The sand in which the discovery was made was lies beneath a layer of limestone that has been dated to be at least 300 million years old and still more recent discoveries of petrified tools have occurred since then. There was a hammer handle found inside a 100 million year old rock near London, England figure 26. This find was particularly unique in fact because though the exterior of the handle was petrified, the interior was discovered to contain an amount of porous coal. Now this is very significant and quite remarkable because there is no scientific way to account for such a thing happening. To explain, the process of petrification occurs when timber or other organic objects are buried in silt. When this occurs, silicates impregnate the material and dissolve it, slowly replacing the oxygen and hydrogen which begins the process of silification which eventually leads to petrification. Coal, on the other hand, is formed by charred timber being greatly compressed under tons of earth. The two processes could not be more different, yet in this case each process must have occurred virtually simultaneously or in extremely short succession. As for science, scientists are unable to produce petrified timber containing porous coal through any modern methods. This also completely negates any possibility of the item being a hoax. The fossilized human handprint We also have the amazing and thoroughly impossible discovery of a completely fossilized handprint which corresponds perfectly to an actual human hand which was found in limestone at Glen Rose Fig. 7. The fossil shows a considerable amount of detail, even the print of the thumbnail. Do you really realize how long it takes for something to fossilize? This fossil quite simply should not exist because the limestone in which this handprint was found has been designated to be from the Middle Cretaceous period which places it at around 110 million years old.